going to have our first tropical depression or tropical storm of the 2024 hurricane season sometime next week. What's going on, guys? Certified meteorologist Jonathan Keg is back with you. We're going to talk about that system. It's in the western Gulf, likely going to stay over there. We'll talk about the mechanisms that are helping to form that potential system and what's going to keep it on that side. Then we're going to look a little bit to the long-range pattern for the rest of June to see if the Atlantic is starting to wake up or if we still have some time to go before we start to see that flurry of expected storms as the those long-range seasonal forecasts have uh, called for for quite some time now. And then we're going to focus on the big-time heat wave coming to the northeast. We're talking triple-digit heat without the humidity factored in, so we're going to break all of that down. Before we get into all that, if you do want to stay updated on the weather, especially as we venture through hurricane season and severe weather season, hit that subscribe button for me. would love to have you guys on board. Also, post in the comments what the weather is doing, where you're tuning in from. Would love to see that and have that weather conversation with you guys. All right, we're going to start things off with the National Hurricane Center Tropical Outlook over the next seven days. Now, Invest 90L, the first invest of the season, that's this thing here that helped to bring South Florida all of that insane, devastating flooding over the past three, four, five days. That is continuing to work its way up and out. This is likely no longer going to develop up has a 10% shot over the next seven days. So not completely zero, but the window is pretty much closed on that one. Then we have this orange little bubble here. It's going to be born out of what we call the Central American gyre that we could get enough spinach. We could get enough congealing of these thunderstorms for this to become an actual tropical system over the next seven days and really to the early and middle part of next week. So we're going to get all into that and we're going to talk about why that is. And what I want to focus your attention on is the atmospheric moisture. This is one of the ways that we can kind of track these things. But over the past couple of days, we've had that fire hose of purple. And on the scale here, the red and purple indicate that very high moisture content in the atmosphere. We had that fire hose over South Florida. We had that dip in the jet stream. Whoops, didn't want to move the entire earth there. The dip in the jet stream helping to lift all of that tropical moisture from the Gulf and the Caribbean right on into Florida. The deal with what's going on now is, and I'll show you the upper level pattern in just one second, all of that moisture now is going to be pushed over to the Gulf. So as we have this Central American gyre, just a semi-permanent area of low pressure helping to bubble up thunderstorms, it's all going to be forced back to the West Gulf on the western side of the Bay of Campeche and the southwest, uh, the extreme southwest Gulf of Mexico. So let me put this into motion and watch that purple kind of slowly lift and get forced over to the west. There you go. This is going to be Tuesday uh, the 18th, and you see that tropical moisture focused on the western Gulf of Mexico. The reason for that is going to be this big chunk of high pressure. This is what's going to also bring the heat to the northeast. So we're going to get into that part in just one second. I first want to talk about finish up the tropical part, and then we'll get you back uh, to what the heat is uh, closer to the end of the video. But this big ridge of high pressure really expanding through the mid-Atlantic into the northeast, all the way back down into parts of the southern plains as well. So all of this where you see this closed contour, my telestration went off, but it's all this area really from Dallas, El Paso, Houston, St. Louis into Arkansas, New York, Pittsburgh, Montreal, Canada. I mean, we're talking big time heat building across the country. There are the arrows. That's going to be the 500 millibar, the upper level wind uh, direction. This is about fifteen to 20,000 feet above your head, and that is going to be forcing everything west. So it's going to dry out South Florida. We might have a couple of thunderstorms through Father's Day weekend and into early next week because we do have onshore flow coming back, but it's the fire hose of tropical moisture is going to be backing off, and we're going to bring some drier air in over the next couple of days. So I want you to know that. All right. Before we get into some of the long range stuff, I wanted to bring your attention to a free thing. And it's another way that you can get an update on the tropics. Uh, it's my Tropics Watch newsletter. It's on clickorlando.com slash newsletters. And if you have a smartphone and you're watching this on a bigger screen and not on your phone, you can scan that QR code with your camera. And that's going to take you to clickorlando.com slash newsletters. We have a bunch of newsletters on the page. Find the 
Tropics Watch one. It is a free sign up, and I will visit your inbox every Monday to give an update on the tropics and as needed. If there's something out there that needs to be uh, talked about, then I'll visit your inbox on a higher frequency as well. But it's every Monday we talk about the tropics for the week ahead, what's going on, what's driving it, and all that stuff. We also have Tropics Watch Live on this channel. It's a live YouTube show where you can be interactive, where you can post your comments, and we can have that conversation in real time. And that is on Mondays also through hurricane season at 11 o'clock in the morning. So we'd love for you guys to tune into that, bookmark that, and to also sign up for the newsletter. So I would really appreciate that. Uh, we have a good time talking about uh, all things weather. All right, so now I want to get you into more of the long-range deal. This is uh, on tropicaltidbits.com. We use this site a lot to get into some of the different ensembles. And what we're looking at here is the European ensemble here, where you see a bunch of these teeny tiny numbers. That's the pressure. Uh, when it's red, it's low pressure. When it's blue, it's high pressure. And when you see the darker yellows, that means that there's a pretty high consensus of where that thing could go if there's something there. And in this case, this is going to be on early in the morning on Wednesday, June 19th. Okay, so we have a bunch of little numbers. So that's a bunch of the ensemble members, just like a band, the ensemble makes up the model. Uh, different initial conditions put into those things so that we can get a wider range of outcomes to see the likelihood and to see kind of a range of outcomes rather than one point with it, like just an operational model would. But nonetheless, certainly painting the picture in the Western Gulf early to middle part of next week, a lot of little numbers popping up there and you see the bright yellows and would favor a landfall somewhere in western Mexico, maybe as far north as extreme central Texas. Now, one of the things that I will say with, with this is that there's still a very, very wide spread when it comes to that. So that's one of the things that we're going to watch. The other thing is it may not be all that strong. It's going to come off as very wide a very large system and a very unorganized system. So it's going to need time to kind of congeal and organize. Regardless of its strength, though, anybody that lives in Mexico or lives in Central America knows that a few days of thunderstorms can cause flash floods and mudslides. So that's really my main concern here, no matter what the strength of this thing is, for our friends in eastern Mexico, maybe as far north as San Antonio or getting into... Uh, Galveston area as well if it lifts that far north. That's something that we're going to fine tune as we get into next week. The thing that I wanted to show you here is far further out into the future. Look at some of the numbers pop back up and we have a little yellow thing uh, start to emerge, meaning that we do have some European ensemble members hinting that there could be a secondary system born out of this Central American gyre as we go into the upcoming weekend. So not this up, not Father's Day weekend, but the 21st, 22nd, 23rd time frame, and then focusing on the North Gulf Coast. Now that is a lot that is far into the future, but it is the pattern. This is something we talked about weeks ago that we do have an MJO pulse coming through. We have the Central American gyre spitting out thunderstorms. So it's something that we would watch for. The other thing that we're going to watch for is where this big chunk of high pressure is. So I mentioned about the blues representing higher pressure, and we have that right here. As this chunk of high pressure starts to back off and retreat, that could allow, as this first one would stay in the Western Gulf, this would allow for the counterclock or the clockwise flow around high pressure to lift up that tropical moisture and potentially send it towards the North Gulf Coast, maybe depending upon the timing of that, back to Florida. So all of that would be in play if a storm does get going. The GFS ensembles paint a similar picture. There's that junk again coming our way early to middle next week. It could be a depression, could be a storm. Regardless, the potential for some very heavy rainfall and flooding in eastern Mexico. And then it also highlights at an even higher probability more of those numbers popping up indicating that again the ensemble members are going to argue anyway for another system to be born out of the extreme western caribbean and lift up or right around the yucatan bay campeche area and then lift up so there's a couple of things that we are uh going to watch when it comes to uh when it comes to the next couple of weeks so there is the qr code again just going to switch back uh my computers so that we can go forward 
with the heat coming to the northeast so you can download that app again or download the uh the newsletter speaking of app the pinpoint hurricane app search wkmg in your app store that's going to take you to a free hurricane app if you like tracking the hurricanes in tropical systems and stuff it is the best app it is our app based out of central florida but it is really for everybody because it's on the tropics if you want to stay updated for that search wkmg in the app store it's going to be the pinpoint hurricane app and it's the best app on the market for that it's free anytime the hurricane center issues anything uh name something designate something something becomes a depression you're going to know about it and you can inter interact with it so that's a, another kind of uh little spiel there to download that and again it's all free that's the important thing all right, so on to the heat. We touched on this a couple days ago. Look at that, 99 in Pittsburgh. That would be a record. That's the red box there. When you see the boxes turn red, that means a record is going to be threatened or broken. When it is orange, that means we are above average. No blue on the map. That would mean below average temperatures. But you see it there. That's Monday. Look at that, 99 degrees in Pittsburgh. Look at that forecast. 102 in Pittsburgh. That would no doubt be a record. It's difficult to get triple-digit heat up here. Syracuse, 97. That's forecast to be a record. 98 in Columbus, 98 in Cincy, 95 in Detroit. All of those would be records on June 18th. And then there we go. Another day of triple-digit heat in the Steel City, 97 degrees in Syracuse. Sorry for my friends in Burlington. My telestration chart there was hiding you. 95 is the forecast in Burlington, 95 in Philly. 98 in Cincy, more record heat in Columbus. So it is going to be really, really hot. Stay safe, friends. In the upper Midwest, Great Lakes and Northeast, the first big heat wave of the spring slash summer coming down the pipeline. And again, that is going to help keep all of that tropical moisture as well as I showed you that big upper ridge right smack into the Western Gulf. So we're going to be watching closely for our friends in Mexico, Central America, and into parts of the Western uh East Texas as well on the West Gulf Coast. Directionally challenged as I try to say that in my mind. Alrighty, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you found this content helpful, please hit that thumbs up button. Again, if you want to sign up for all those newsletters, that would be awesome. We can have this weather conversation. That's why this channel is here to talk about the weather in an informative, scientific way where there's none of that hype and fear mongering. So we'd love it if you hop on board and join the team. Hit that subscribe button and we will catch you next time.